Hi everyone. I am Ngân Nguyễn, a communication assistant with Symphonia Toronto, and I, I am about to speak with violinist Julia Mojoyev, who is going to perform with the orchestra on Friday, April 14, 2023. Hi, Julia. Thank you for meeting with me today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So when did you first pick up a violin and what led to that moment? Um, well, it's actually quite a funny story. Um, I first started playing the violin when I was around two and a half years old. Um, I come from a very vibrant family of musicians. My father teaches and plays violin. My mom teaches and plays piano. My brother also plays piano, although he's a neurologist now. And my grandmother also was an amazing piano teacher. So what happened was once um, I was around one years old and I was being fed by my grandma in the kitchen. And apparently I started singing um, the tune of Mozart, Ein Klein, Nachtmusik, like dun, 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 dun. Apparently I was right on key <laughs> and my family was like, okay, that's it, violin. <laughs> so I don't know why they came to that conclusion, but that was apparently the moment where they decided I would be playing violin. Although my brother was already playing piano, so it made sense to kind of balance the family instruments out a little bit. <laughs> That's so nice. So how would you describe your development as an artist in terms of your interests and challenges so far? Well, um, this season so far has been my first year out of school. So that's been interesting. And um, also, I, I thought it would be a lot more scary than, than it is. Um, I'm really fortunate to have a really supportive network of mentors and teachers who still sometimes when they have time, they hear me. Um, but now um, I'm a lot more focused on pursuing larger project projects. So I have time to um, apply for larger competitions and um, I'm able to plan more ahead for recitals and um, curate my own programs and things like that. And I'm finding um, that's something that's different than when I was in school, you have a very set number of concerts and things that you have to do for courses but now I'm having to be more creative and um, think about projects that are engaging for the public and different and innovative and something that separates me just from you know the the, the next the next musician um, as I'm trying to have a career as a, a soloist and a chamber musician so um, I'm having to have a lot more creative output than um, when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe your personal style of playing the violin? Well, um, it's a bit of a tough question, um, but I can, I can easier answer um, what my priorities are when, when I play and when I learn a piece. Um, I'm very excited about music, especially when I'm learning a piece. Um, I've always had very strong like emotional responses to um, how I want my pieces to sound, or I even have very strong emotional responses to different phrases in the music. So um, I go a lot on that. I, I've, I've gotten the comment sometimes from mentors that I'm a little too detail focused, that I sometimes, I don't think about the whole phrase or the whole structure enough. So that's definitely something that I work on, but um, I love the details and especially, um, collaborating so if i'm playing with a pianist i love i love the details in little magic moments we can make together or in my string quartet or um i'm so excited to make those little musical moments together with symphonia toronto in the mendelssohn as i'm learning it i can just uh as i'm looking at the score i can just imagine the moments that i'll have with the different instruments um so i guess yeah, I'm very excitable, um, passionate, and emotional, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. If you could step back in time and hang out with your favorite composer, who would you choose and what would you like to ask them? It's so hard. I'm sorry. It's very hard for me to pinpoint a favorite composer. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love so much music that I play. Um, I'm very drawn to Impressionism, uh, French music, uh, late Romantic, but I also feel very at home playing um, classical music and uh, late classical, early romantic like Mendelssohn. So um, maybe if I were to think about Mendelssohn, what I would ask him 
is um, since he composed this concerto when he was either 12 or 13, different sources say 12, different sources say 13. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would ask him, especially since he was a student, he was a composing student at that time and a virtuoso, I was like, what gave, what led him to take such risks? in his composing because the actual the, the way that he composed this concerto is a little bit untraditional than maybe his later style or later styles of romantic concertos there are passages that are really long and drawn out that maybe composers later than him would have fragmented a little bit like that but he i, I would ask him where was he inspired to take the risks or was it just his own impulses <laughs> um i think it's, it's such an interesting concerto and he really, the way that he develops his themes, you can tell he's really obsessive about certain um, motives, which is, it's fairly, fairly common in composers, but the way that Mendelssohn does it in this specific concerto, he reiterates himself a lot, but in slightly different ways, which I think is awesome, especially to a new listener um, who hasn't heard this concerto before. They'll really get the point, I think. But I guess I would ask him, uh, I, I'm kind of bouncing around the point a little bit, but I would ask, what did his teacher think of this piece at the time? Mm -hmm. um, did he think it was experimental or did he think it was traditional? I think it's actually quite an experimental compositional piece. Um, so I would, yeah, I would have a lo lot of specific questions about this concerto. And so what would you like listener to know about the Mendelssohn Concerto you will play with Symphony in Toronto? Well, um, I've already said a little bit about this mm -hmm. in my last question, but I definitely would love them to know how young he was. So either mm -hmm. 12 or 13 years old. Um, I would also like them to understand that this was a very experimental way that he was composing. So it might, it's really not the regular classical or romantic concerto. There are certain things about it that stand out. Um, the orchestral solos are beautiful and lush and long, and uh, they participate like almost like a soloist. Um, and I think that's really cool. And I would, I would just like them to really take the piece as it is, um, and know how much I'm enjoying learning it. And um, I'm really grateful that Symphony de Toronto has asked me to play this piece because I haven't had the chance to learn it yet before this. Everybody plays the E minor. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for everybody to open their minds to this lesser known concerto and really appreciate it for, it is, for what it is. And actually the other thing is that um, the person who discovered this concerto, it was obviously not published by Mendelssohn. Um, it was only discovered in um, the 20th century um, during Yehudi Menuhin, a an extremely amazing violinist um, who passed away uh, maybe 30, 40 years ago. Um, but he was the one who discovered this concerto and made an edited version of it. And he, um, he even gave a few suggestions as to, um, I'm not sure what this note is in the score. I think it's this note or whatnot. So there is quite a bit of influence of this violinist Yehudi Menuhin in um, the best edited version of this concerto. So that's another thing that I would love everybody to know is actually just how recently it was discovered and um, put into the regular Western classical canon. So I love that about this piece because there's not like a huge tradition of performing it. So I feel that I can be more free with it just as I think Mendelssohn was free with composing it. I feel just as free in, in, in performing it because it's not really clear exactly what he wanted everywhere. So I think that's really cool and a little bit mysterious. Thank you very much, Julia. It's a great to be with you. Symphonia Toronto, we perform Mendelssohn D minor violin concerto and Tchaikovsky miniature for youth all on Friday evening, April 14th in Trinity St. Paul Center. More information and tickets are available at symphoniatoronto.com. Thank you. Thank you so much.